a.m. to 6.30 a.m. from Monday to Friday on Sunny Adeni Ministries channel on YouTube and Facebook. We shall be taking the communion day. Be a part of our daily devotional titled, Power to Triumph. It runs from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. from Monday to Friday on Sunny Adeni Ministries channel on YouTube and Facebook. Faithful to perform his words in Jesus' name. Amen. Are we excited to see the first uh, Wednesday in the month of February? Hallelujah. I'll be reading the letter to all joyful celebrants for the month of February 2022. I am the God of all sufficiency, the source that never runs dry, an inexhaustible God. I am the beginning and the end. I am your source of peace, love, and joy. They looked unto me, and they were not ashamed. Psalm 34, verse 5. Those who look up to me are never put to shame. I have determined that all through this year and beyond, you will never see shame. Amen. Amen. I need you to cooperate with me. Obey every instruction that I give. I know the beginning and the end. Put your trust and confidence in me. Make me your source of everything in life. I have seen your desire to hear from me and do my bidding. I urge you to hold on to, the, to my world. Trust every step that I lead you into and put your confidence in me. When you, have, when you have this approach, you will rest in my words and maintain your joy, saith the Spirit of God. Joy is an attribute of only the redeem of the Lord. The scripture says in Psalm 118, 118 verse 15, New Living Translation, Songs of joy and victory are sung in this camp of the godly. The scriptures also says in Psalm 89 verse 15, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. When you rejoice in spite of contrary, contrary situations, you are, you are praiseful. When you are praiseful, you bring down God's presence as God inhabits the praises of his people. Consequently, your joy attracts God. And like a fish cannot survive without a water, God cannot abide in a joyless atmosphere. Based on the foregoing, the prophetic direction for February 2022 is... Can we say it together? I overflow with joy. Again, I overflow with joy. Say it convincingly. I overflow with joy. Psalm 89, verse 15. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Let's read together Psalm 89, verse 15. Blessed is the people that know the joyful psalm. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice evermore. All through this month, we shall focus on the attributes and the source of joy, the effect of joy, and how to always stay joyful. May we overflow with joy all through the days of this month in Jesus' name. Jesus is Lord. Pastor Sonny Adeni. What did the Lord say about you concerning this month? I will overflow with joy. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Let's welcome the ministry of Sister Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord. Sing like these we just want to bless you we just rest in your love we worship you we adore you we magnify you in this place most high God we give you praise you are welcome you are welcome we are gathered for only you we are gathered to hear you we are gathered because of you receive all the praise Lord have your way as you wish as you desire speak to our hearts tonight Lord Jesus and your word which is spirit and life let it locate every spirit in this place let it bring life to every dead situation in the name of Jesus Holy Ghost we thank you you are the teacher we are sitting at your feet tonight and we pray that we will hear you both online and on land in the mighty name of Jesus amen put your hands together for Jesus as you take your seats in God's presence I want to welcome everyone here tonight. You're welcome to church on this very cold Wednesday night. The Lord has taken note of you. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Sonny, Pastor Fola, and the leadership of the church. Once again, I honor and appreciate every one of you. And I'm so humbled to be given this privilege to share God's word, to coordinate the teaching of the word tonight. And I pray that you will not see me, but you see the Lord Jesus whom I am standing behind in the name of Jesus. Amen. So last week we had our 17th out of 21 days fasting and prayer. And um, this week we are starting a new Bible study series. And it's titled Recognizing Temptations. Very exciting. Recognizing Temptations. Can we say that together? Amen. Recognizing temptations. We're going to go straight into the introduction. It says, the first thing we need to know in relation to temptation is to learn to recognize when we are being tempted. You know, people say identifying a problem you have means it's half solved. And that's the way it is with temptation. When you know you are being tempted, there is hope that you can overcome. But when you have no idea that this is a temptation, then what can the righteous do? Temptations usually offer us an invitation to succumb to a lust or a deep desire which we have. You know, the Bible says in, in um, the book of James chapter 1 verse 14 that each person is tempted when he is enticed by his lusts or his own desires. So the, here we have that temptation usually offers us the invitation to succumb to those lusts or those deep desires that we have. When we are being tempted, we frequently find ourselves in a should I or should I not do situation. How many of us have been there before? We have all been tempted. It's, it's common to man. And so to move further, we're going to look at some definitions of temptations, of temptation. And it says here in the outline that temptation is a desire to engage in short-term urges for enjoyment that threatens long-term goals. Does that make sense? It is a desire to engage in short-term urges for enjoyment which puts our long-term goals in jeopardy. 
So what are, what are some of our long-term goals as Christians? We can echo it out. What are, what, what do you, what are some of our long-term goals as Christians? To get to heaven? That's the ultimate goal. But there are other long-term goals before we get there. Yes, ma'am. To fulfill destiny. Because if it's to get to heaven, once we give our lives to Christ, hey, we can die. But there are things we need to do before we get to heaven. And mama said one of them. To fulfill destiny. Are those the only two goals we have? <laughs> to remain rapture. Yes, these are all long-term goals we have as Christians. Yes, Rebecca. To live righteously, exactly. And so, temptation is a desire to enjoy briefly, but that brief enjoyment puts these things we have mentioned in jeopardy. Amen. And bear in mind that when the Bible was saying in James chapter 1 verse 14 that we are enticed by our own desires, our own lusts, he was referring to the early Christian church. The book of James is addressed to believers, not unbelievers. It was addressed to believers and he was telling them that you are tempted when you are drawn away by your own desires. What does that tell us? Giving your life to Jesus does not kill the fleshly desires we have. So it's something we need to work on daily as we grow and mature in Christ. Praise the Lord. How do we recognize temptation? As our faces are different, so are our strengths and our weaknesses. What might be a temptation for one may not be a temptation for another. Do we agree with that? That being the case, it is the responsibility of every serious-minded Christian to periodically examine oneself, himself or herself, and identify those areas which pose as lusts or weaknesses in our lives in order to stay away from the situations or the people that trigger those lusts. So what the outline is saying here is, take time to look at your life. If you're truthful to yourself, you know the areas you're struggling in. You know, that's where the saying comes that nobody is a saint, but you know, we're all saints in Christ. But if you examine yourself, you, you know the areas you're struggling with. The areas that you had, you were fully manifesting in before you gave your life to Christ. Most times that's what we still tries to come to, you know, tempt us when we have finally um, accepted Christ into our lives. I want us to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 15. It says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Can we open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 15? Verse 5, yes, thank you, sir. Anybody that sees it can read. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. No, my verse 5. I'd like us to also read it in the KJV. Was that KJV? Yes, okay, that was KJV. What does the Bible say? It said, examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. So it's biblical. God is admonishing us. Once in a while, sit down and take stock of your, yourself. What are those things I'm not doing? What are those things that are tempting me? What are those things that entice my flesh, that make me a soulish Christian? What are those things that still attract me? in the world it is our responsibility to do that self-examination like we all know we can't deceive ourselves so if we t sit down it doesn't make us unbelievers it's a res it's it's actually being responsible when you say father i'm struggling with this or ah this is still ongoing and then you sit down and you know begin to work on yourself anything or any person place environment thing or situation that fuels those weaknesses you have, those deep desires, those lusts, that thing is a temptation. So a temptation can be a person. A temptation can be an environment. Some people, once they enter where worldly music is being played, a, a club or something, it triggers something in them. They begin to struggle. It, brings, it, it fans old flames. For some people, it's once they see where there's money is being counted, it triggers something in them. You know, so it could be anything. It could be an environment. It could be a space. It could be an outfit. 
It could be what we see with our eyes. It could be what we hear with our... It could be the kind of conversation we have. And when we have those things, we just realize that we just feel that fellowship is broken. We, can't start, we, we feel defiled. So a temptation could be anything, any person, any place. And, you know, we need to be sensitive to these things. So anything that fuels those lusts is a temptation. Therefore, you must perform an honest scan on your soul. Do you know why it says your soul? Because like we always hear, our spirits are from God, right? Our spirits are regenerated. Our spirits are pure. It is our souls where our intellect, our will, and our emotions lie. Those, that's the area of our being that drags us down. That's the area that we need to bring under the, fle- under the spirit, under control. The soul is the one that con- then con- communicates to the body. So the soul is like the mastermind of the being. The spirit is saved, is born again with Christ and all that. But if we do not train our soul, then that's where we have the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Why I say the soul communicate, tells the body what to do? Because when we feel emotions, which is part of what makes up our souls, it, re- it translates to us physically feeling, you know, looking sad or shedding tears or something. Once we feel whatever emotion we feel, our body then displays it. So the mind, which is your, the, your soul, is where we need to focus on. So, and that's why I like that song that says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Your spirit has no problem worshiping God, but the soul, do you feel like, how do you feel feelings? Your will. That is where we need to bring under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so, perform an honest scan on your soul and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you any hidden faults in you which you may not be aware of. There are some things we don't know that are lurking within us. I heard a a preaching once that said there is a revealed you, there is a hidden you, the one you know that nobody is, and then there's an unknown you, the one you don't even know about. So it is pertinent to ask the spirit of God to examine us, reveal those things to us. And let's look at Psalm 139 verse 23. Sorry, that's a typo. It's Psalm 139, not Psalm 129. Psalm 139 verse 23 in the King James Version. Anyone that sees it can read. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Can you see that prayer? Those are some of the prayers we need to pray as believers. Apart from the give me, apart from the praise, and sometimes sit down and say, Father, search me. Examine me. What is in me that, def- that, that offends you? There's a version that says, that speaks like that. If there be any way in me that offends you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. Because honestly, you, you did not make yourself. There are some things that you have, unless a situation presents itself, you don't know that you have that capability to behave like that. Are we aware? Sometimes things happen and you're like, ah, I didn't know I could maybe shout like this or I could do this or do that. Praise the Lord. I want us to read Psalm 26 verse 2. Also in King James Version, if you see it, go ahead. Examine me, O God, God, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Examine me, O God. This is why one of the reasons why David was a man, God called him a man after my heart. He wasn't just out to offer God praise and win battles. He wanted to make sure that God looks at him and is pleased. He's the only one I saw up until now. Maybe later I will, but that has prayed such prayers that God search me. God examine me. Try my heart. Praise the Lord. Number three, is temptation a sin? No, the answer is there. Temptation is not a sin. Giving in to temptation, rather, is the sin. So being tempted, it does not mean you have sinned. It depends on what you do with the temptation. For example, there's an illustration there. You walk along the street and you find a wallet... You look into the wallet and discover that it contains several hundred dollars in cash. There is also a driver's license and credit cards identifying the owner of the wallet. Now, this scenario is a temptation, true or false? 
because you're like, should I or should I not? One could attempt to justify taking the money by saying that the owner doesn't need it, there are lots of credit cards inside, he's obviously financial, financially well off. He could also justify taking it by saying, oh, I, I sowed this seed a month ago, this is probably my harvest, my reward, this is a ravenous bird. You know, we have, <laughs> we have Christian <laughs> language for certain things. This is my ravenous bird. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, we read on. The temptation is not the sin. Now, what is done with the temptation is the deciding factor. If you return the wallet to the owner, then you have not sinned. If you, have, if you keep the money to yourself, then it is a sin. Therefore, to be faced with temptation, brethren does not mean you have sinned. And it's important to register this in your mind because we know that our adversary is an accuser. Satan looks for the slightest opportunity to condemn you. So it's important to know that though I was faced with this situation, I have not fallen from grace. I have not um, broken fellowship with, with with the Father. It is what you, your response to it that is the issue. For example, Eve... When the serpent came speaking with her and she, you know, talking, trying to seduce her to eat the apple, that wasn't a sin. She hadn't fallen, right? It was when she responded to him and took it and ate out of it and, uh, you know, gave Adam and we know the story. That was when the Bible says immediately their eyes were opened. Immediately that act was done. Not when he was talking or conversing with her. Same thing as Joseph. The point at which Potiphar's wife grabbed him and all that, he, ha- he did not sin, but he fled. So that scenario was not sin unto him. His response of running away made him righteous. Same thing with David. David is a different story. The point where he saw Bathsheba taking her bath, that wasn't a sin. He was walking out around his balcony and saw someone showering. That wasn't a sin. But his response to the situation was the sin. He then responded by taking it in, plotting, and we know how the story goes. So... Understand today that that I'm faced with a temptation does not make me a sinner. I have not sinned because I'm faced with temptation. My response to it is what matters. Praise the Lord. Most times we hear the word trials and temptations being used interchangeably. True or false? I want someone to, before looking at your outline, what what comes to your mind when you hear trials and temptation? Who wants to try and differentiate the two? Brother Henry, can we have a microphone to Brother Henry? Thank you. Trials and temptation, with, without looking at your, at your outline. Thank you. Thank you. I think um, trial is basically like sometimes when you go through like um, um, persecutions, or um, maybe you have a challenge, you are trying to meet up something, or you've been praying for something, and it's not forthcoming, and things like that. Uh, maybe there's a delay, things that will require your patience. Okay. So in trial, our patience are tested, right? In temptation, um, it's not really as, as that. It's usually something internal, right? Uh, why in trial is mostly... Um, things that we are kind of like waiting for to happen and we are being patient with it. Thank you for your contribution. Anybody have any other views? Sister Susan. In my own understanding, Mm -hmm. I think trials is when we are already going through those things. Not like you are faced with, just like he explained, maybe things that are trying your patience. You know, you prayed for something, it has not come yet. You know, diverse things, you are going through it. Mm-hmm. While temptation is, you are faced with something that requires you to decide which way to go. Like, wonderful. You are presented a scenario. Mm-hmm. Are you going here or there? I like, I like the contributions. Thank you so much. Let's look into the outline. And our anchor scripture is James chapter, tw- chapter 1, verse 2 to um, verse 12. Okay. So we're going to read it. 2 to 12. I want someone to read the first two verses and another person the next two verses like will alternate like that. So Rebecca, you can start. James chapter 1, verses 2 and yes. 3. My brethren, count it all joy 
when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Amen. Somebody else, verse 4 and 5. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Eight and nine, anybody? Somebody, the last three verses. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so from this scripture we've read, we're going to see what we can learn about trials. And then the next one will be about temptation. So the first thing we see is that we are to welcome trials with what? Joy. And that's in verse 2. The Bible says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. So our response to trials should be joy and we have uh, described trials our brethren have described it as periods of waiting periods that seem to delay us things that try our patience the bible says count it all joy number two try there will be various kinds of trials so it's not trial can be in any form or fashion it says here when you fall into diverse temptations so that makes us know that there are different types of temptations of trials diverse ones so we should be ready to receive them with joy according to the word of the lord the third thing about trials is that trials test our faith we can see that in verse 3 it says knowing this that the trying of your faith walk at patience so trials are meant to test our faith praise the lord the next is that trials that the trials that test our faith they produce perseverance in our faith and in our lives as we can see in the fourth verse it says but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing that also leads us to the fifth point that says it leads to maturity and wholeness a full functioning christian life so when trials come our way it is not meant to destroy us as a child of God, no trial is meant to destroy you and I. And that's why the Bible says that all things work together. Even the things that are unpleasant, they work together for our good because they are building us up. Hallelujah. Trials produce a faith and a life that lacks nothing. As we also saw in verse 4, it says you'll be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Trials provide opportunity to trust God, and that is in verse 6. He says, but let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. And we can see that from verse 5, he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. And that was just after talking about trials. So the response to trials, when we are faced with trials, our prayer should be, God, give me wisdom. It is the wisdom of God that enables you and I to navigate 
through trials. It's the wisdom of God that will enable us to stand firm in trials. It's God's wisdom that will make us be joyful in trials. And that's why right after James talked about letting patience have a perfect walk and counting it all joy, he says, if you lack wisdom, ask God and he will give to you all men liberally. Praise the Lord. So trials give us the opportunity to trust God for the resources of wisdom and it gives God the opportunity to provide as well. The Bible says he will not resent you asking. God is more than happy to give you his wisdom. Amen. Trials provide opportunity for us to humble ourselves and acknowledge our dependence on God. Affliction has a way of keeping us humble. Is anybody a witness here? Affliction has a way of keeping us humble and depending on God. 2 Corinthians 12, 4. Jesus told Paul, my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So God's, the strength of Christ, God's strength is perfected in our weakness. God's wisdom is manifested and perfected in our foolishness. God's direction is perfected when we don't know which way to go. It is at the point where, God, I don't know what to do. I surrender. That's where God steps in. That's where God comes. When you've done all you can, hallelujah. So the, when we are passing through trials, it gets us to the point where we're like, God, I surrender or have your way. Do what you can do. Carry me on your wings. That was what Paul was experiencing when he complained and not complained, but cried unto God. And Jesus told him, my, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Think about it. The strength of Christ is perfect in weakness. The strength of... So we can't be... Once God sees that we are self, you know, we have our... We are doing it our own. He will step aside and watch. He only comes where there is a cry for help. He only stretches out an arm when there is a cry for help. So let's learn to rely on God. Don't allow affliction to make us, to send us to the place where we are dependent on God. Let's learn to lean on God anyhow and anyway. Amen. God's promises, God promises and gives the crown of life to those who endure trials. That's so reassuring and comforting. That is in verse 12. The Bible says, blessed is the man that endureth for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life. So that's one of the crowns in heaven, the crown of life. Who knows the other crowns? There are other crowns in heaven. It's not, not just one crown. There's the crown of life. Who can tell us any other crown? You're not, you don't know what you're even looking forward to. You want to go to heaven. You don't know what you're going to receive in heaven. The crown of glory. So is there a crown of glory? There's a crown of righteousness. There's another, there are several other crowns. Sometimes take time and just study. They are listed in the Bible. There's a crown of life as well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So enduring trials and now enduring it is enduring it with a good attitude. So it's count it all joy. When we come out victorious, God has promised you and I a crown of life. So since God has promised that by the very fact that there is a promise from God for enduring trials, we can know for, a sure, for sure that God is in control of the trials because he's watching. And so if he sees that this, my child, has done well, a crown is reserved for you. So look at it like God is watching my response. There's a crown I want to get. This trial, the devil is not in charge. God is in charge of our trials. And so with that, you know that it's not going to consume me. It's not going to lead to my death or my destruction. Hallelujah. That should be comforting when we are faced, when difficult situations come. Remember, the devil is not in charge. I'm a child of God and God is in, in charge of the trials he brings my way. And he's waiting to give me that crown of life. Hallelujah. Trials are actually God's training and assessment period of us. And like every assessment or exam in life, when you pass it, you are ushered to the next level. So trials often show up as difficult, unpleasant situations, like we already said. Most of the time, which we have no control over from a human point of view. However, these situations help us develop character. 
So I want to emphasize the first portion, that trials are like God's assessment period of us. It's time to see whether we are ready to move to the next level. It's time to see whether we are ready to handle more. It's time to see whether we are ready to do more, you know, to receive more. And then he sends trial to see our attitude, to gauge our attitude. And like every exam, when you pass it, you move on. If you don't pass it, you remain there. I've heard it being said before that you can be at one you know, trial for several years until you learn the lesson and you're, you know, then before you move on. And so, by the grace of God, we are going to be receiving our trials with joy. Amen. Amen. I want us to look at Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 6. Before then, you know the Bible talks about a great cloud of witnesses. So when we are going through trials, they are looking at you. They are cheering you on. Those who have gone ahead of you. So re remember that it helps to know that you're being watched. People are cheering on you. God is saying, ah, let this my child make it. He's watching. He's supplying grace. Romans chapter 5 verse 3. Anyone that sees it can read. Sorry, ma. Can we have it in the New Living Translation? Thank you, Ma. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 6. Anyone seen it? Yeah. We can rejoice too when we run into who? How many, how many of us rejoice when we run into problems and trials? I do not. <laughs> We are learning to. But how many people actually say, wow, a difficult situation. Praise God, it's my time to move to the next level. Amen. Yes, we should get to that point. That is what the Bible, that's what God wants us to do. Wow, this is a challenge. God, I'm not going to fill you. I'm passing this exam. That's how it should be. It says we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. Ma, you can read on. They help us develop endurance. Amen. Endurance develops what? Strength of character. That's why I said that these situations help us to develop character. God is more interested in your character than in your comfort. He will put you through an uncomfortable situation so that you can build godly character. Read on, man. Character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Praise the Lord. Um, that's okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So we can see it here. We too can rejoice when we face problems and trials because our character is being built. So when you are praying, God, do the, I want, you know, character, expect trials to come. Expect problems to come. That is how God trains his children. Praise the Lord. We'll move on quickly to the things we can learn about temptations from the book of James as well. Chapter 1 and then verse 3 to 17. James chapter 1 verse 13 to 17. Hallelujah. James chapter 1. I'll just quickly read that. Okay. Let no man say when he is tempted... God, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my bre beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Praise the Lord. So from this scripture, we can see about temptation that God cannot be tempted. That was the first thing. It says, let no man say God is tempting me. It says, God is never tempted. So God cannot be tempted with evil. Brethren, use that as your weapon when you face temptation. Why? Because you are carrying God on the inside of you. So when the devil brings his suggestions and is just telling him, God cannot be tempted. I carry God in me. The one who lives in me cannot be tempted. Therefore, I cannot be tempted. Get thee behind me. Praise the Lord. 
It also says that God does not tempt anyone, and that was in verse 13. It says God never is never tempted to do. Remember, and remember, when you are being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God does not tempt anyone. So, brethren, let us not be tempters. If we are truly carrying God within us and God does not tempt anyone, don't be the one that will tempt somebody else. You cannot be a stumbling block and think you will go to heaven and the person... No, you cannot be... It can't, can't work that way. So, as in your interactions, in your daily you know, walk and interaction with people, be careful that you are not in somebody's temptation. Do not be the one that will cause someone to fall. And that can be in any form or fashion, in the things we say, in the way we appear, in the way we dress, in, the, our, conversa in our conversations with them. Do not be a temptation to someone else. Praise the Lord. Young ladies, I hope you're hearing me, our Christian ladies in the house, do not be a temptation to others. The source of our temptation is our own desire. That is in verse 14. The temptation comes from our own desires which entice us and drag us away. The Bible is very clear on that. So our own lust, the deep-seated greed and deep desires which we have are the things that entice us and pull us away. Temptation has sin as the underlying outcome. It could lead to sin if we follow through and sin ultimately leads to death. So temptation, when fully succumbed to lead to death and that we saw in verse 15 so whenever a tempting situation comes your way it may look very little it may look very little any situation that offers you the option of you know disobeying god just know that at the bottom of it is death whenever we are whenever we compromise whenever we disobey god whenever we yield to temptation brethren something in you and i dies that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Temptations are death traps disguised in a few minutes of pleasure, a promise of more money, a superior reputation, success in an exam, a project, whatever it is. Did you get that? Temptations are death traps but they are disguised in, oh, you will get this if you do this. Oh, just a little this. Oh, let's just, let's just, let me just, let me just a little bit. Imagine the sin of how Eve was deceived. What was the suggestion of Satan? Just bite, just taste the apple. It wasn't anything major. Just that little act. It's a little act just to take the fruit and bite, taste it. That was what led to the whole fall of man. So understand that no matter how little the temptation may be, the suggestion, he may come through a friend or anybody offering, just, just try this, just this once. Brethren, underneath it is death. We shall not be deceived in Jesus' name. Amen. In summary, temptation is the way that the devil tries to trap down the believer and destroy him or her. Trials, on the other hand, are great blessings that are sent to us to grow us, to bless us, and bring glory to God. The enemy's goal in tempting us is to cause us to fall, while our Heavenly Father's purpose in trying us is to build us up, to mature us, and to perfect us. Can we read Job chapter 23, verse 10, in the New, New International Version? But he knows the way that I take. Yes. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. So that is the end result of our trials. When God tries us, we come forth as gold. When we pass through that fire, that furnace of affliction, we come forth as pure gold. In other words, from the standpoint of the enemy, temptation is an opportunity to deceive or to tear down the believer. But from God's standpoint, it is an opportunity for you and I to prove our faith, to mature, to grow, to remain steadfast and complete in Christ, lacking nothing. That was what Jesus meant when he said, the enemy of the, uh, the enemy is, um, how does that scripture go? He says, but he has nothing in me. Exactly. So that is the purpose of trials, to get us to that point where the enemy has tried, tried, but we have overcome, we have brought our lust, all those greed, 
under, we have conquered them, we, are, we have subdued those desires. We are not soulish Christians. We are letting the Spirit lead. We are led by the Spirit. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 to 7 in the New Living Translation. First Peter 1, okay. So be truly glad. There's a wonderful joy ahead, even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. Verse 7. These trials will Who is reading? That... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't see. Go ahead, ma. Sorry, you weren't hearing me. Should I start from the beginning? Yes, please. Okay. Verse 6. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. Verse 7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than more than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Hallelujah. That is wonderful. It says, be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. Though you must endure many trials. And it says for a little while, because you cannot compare a lifetime to eternity. It says, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. That's how God shows, that's how we can prove that our faith is genuine through trials. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than gold. So, when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. That is so amazing. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? We will make it in the name of Jesus. We will rejoice in our trials and our faith shall be tried and come forth as pure gold in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do we have any questions? Any questions? Ambra um, Henry, we can start with you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, with regards to, I just want to put more um, light on the, the question when you talk about trials and temptation. So we already talked about uh, trials um, test our faith and patience. Can we also say like temptation try to test our righteous living and holiness? Is that, is that, that's, is that the end goal, right, for temptation? Yes, I, okay. I would say that because we know, like I said, the enemy is the accuser. He's watching and if you yield and you, you, know, you fall to his, to his temptation. He goes before the father and says, see, see who you're saying is. Why do you want to give him this? Look at what he did. This, so the, the, that's, your statement is actually correct. Okay. The second question is, uh, we talked about that temptation is not actually sin, which I do agree. But then uh, also James 1.14 talk about the fact that uh, say when we are tempted, we are driven away by our own lust. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus says something. It says, when you look at a woman lustfully, you have committed adultery in your heart. So how do you reconcile, you know, these three scriptures or two scriptures mm -hmm. with, you know, temptation not being seen? Well, if you look at a woman lustfully, you have already fallen for that temptation. If you had looked at her, carry your eye straight away, knowing that this is my weakness, then you haven't sinned. But for the fact that you have looked at her lustfully implies that you had spent time Probably, you know, undressing her, analyzing her, imagining. Well, that is the lustful looking. You can't glance and look away and then you've sinned. No. I don't know if I'm correct. Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, mine is, um, uh, I'm just trying to, like, um, reconcile three things from the teachings. The trials, temptations, and faith. Um, for instance, we probably come to church, we pray and believe God for certain things to happen in our lives. <clears throat> and in doing that, your faith comes into play. Believing that what you ask, God will do it for you if you have that faith. Right? Now, <clears throat> if someone is looking for a job, for instance, and... Um, you come to say, this is a job I did not apply for. Uh, is that a trial? Is that a temptation? Whichever way it falls. Um, and if you say, if it's temptation, um, 
the way you handle it, your response to it determines whether uh, you've committed a sin or that. So are you supposed to go back to tell these people, I didn't apply for this job, please. Why do you have to give me this job? That is one. Then two, um, we hear people also pray, maybe you are believing God for financial assistance and all of that, and you see, ah, suddenly I saw money in my account or wherever. And these days we hear from some Christian ministry that will say, miracle alert, money enters your account. Now, is that a trial? Is that temptation? This is money, you've been praying for it, and maybe your father and the Lord has been prophesying. Money, you will receive it, and you are believing God for that, and you have the faith that, oh, what my father and the Lord has told me must happen, and this is money by me, your account, and you've been, right? So, is that trial, temptation, are you supposed to go back and say, ah, this is not my money? Oh, where is your faith in this case? Amen. I will start with the second question. I think our mother in the Lord has had some experience like that. What an upright person will do would be to go to the bank and say, oh, I don't know where... I think Deaconess has had a situation like that as well, even Deacon Joseph. So, somebody who is... My personal view would be to verify and see, oh, was this a mistake, or I just saw this, and then if this, some, most times they say, uh, that's, it belongs to you. So I do want to... Yeah, I want to buy, in my case, though, the money was about $80 or so, uh, or I can't remember now, my wife, maybe my wife can help me out, what we did, when we discovered it, we went straight to the bank, that we saw this money, and we know we are not aware of it. The lady checked and checked and com- we even asked her to confirm very well. She checked and checked and checked. She said, no, it was correct. That is your money. I said, are you sure? Please check again. Because we, I personally went there to be sure so that I even wanted them to remove it from my account. But she said everything on my account was correct. Yes, and just like our father in the Lord, when they back back when he was uh, in Nigeria, when they, the bank told him that his uh, mortgage was cleared, what did he do? He went and said, are you sure? Let me Check your records. Okay, put it in writing. Exactly. Send me an email so that I will have proof that, okay, I actually came to verify. So I, I believe the right thing would be, be to confirm, you know, go to the bank or whichever, and then if it's yours, it's yours. <laughs> Sister Margaret. Oh, okay. We'll come to. Okay, you have the mic already. Okay, let's hear you. Okay, so I have a question to what he said. Okay, so I received money before in my account magically, but I didn't confirm it. Is that a sin? (laughs) Oh, but I didn't didn't put it there. How is it a sin? (laughs) You should have verified where the, yeah, you should have checked. Oh, yes. sorry, just just for, for next time. Sister Margaret, let's hear you. <laughs> yeah, we need to be upright. You know, I was listening to something and some, the preacher said we need to combine prosperity with integrity. So let's, let's not, if it's yours, it's yours. When God blesses you, he blesses you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There was a day that my kids find, found... Um, money in the church, not here, in another church. And so the pastor was there, so they took the money to the pastor. They said to you, mommy, we found this money. And then I said, take it to the pastor. So he was there, and so the pastor said, okay, you guys can take it. So it, it's actually good that any time you found money, not only in church, but anywhere, it's good to ask and check and if people say, oh, we don't know anything about it, then of course, it becomes yours, and then it's not a sin. But then if you don't ask, then obviously it's a temptation which generates to sin. So, yeah. Thank you for that contribution. I don't think we've completed um, Brother Vincent's question. The first, account, the first one was about a job. If you get an offer letter for a job you didn't apply for, is that it? You communicate with them. There's no, there's no big deal about it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's even an issue. 
you accept the offer if you want and go for the orientation and they, they have their records. It has happened before. People get jobs they didn't apply for. But, Asked and they said, oh, actually, um, we, didn't, um, we didn't have your application and all of that. And you now say, okay, I will take the job, right? But in the teaching, you said, um, type teacher can be something that we want to um, dis disrupt your future glory or future goals. Now, taking the job, which you didn't apply for, Maybe that can hinder something that is coming if, bigger for you if, in the future. You never can If sell. you were praying for a job and you get a job offer, accept the offer and go show up for your orientation. If it's not yours, it's not yours. Our time is up, I think. Can we... Sister Rebecca, okay, that should be the... Okay. Thank you. So, uh, you mentioned that trials are from God, right? So we can, we can take it that trials are from God while temptations are from the devil. Mm. So in the case of Job, was he tried or he was tempted? Because he came from the devil, right? But at the end of the day, he still got promoted, so to speak. Yeah, so Job's case was trial and temptation. God, and it, it, wasn't, it was God that gave the enemy that permission because God was trying him and he tried him through allowing the enemy to tempt him. So Job experienced both trials from the hardship and the affliction he had and temptation when his wife said, cause God and die, when his friends came and, you know, were giving him all that counsel. So Job is a peculiar case of both trial and temptation. Praise the Lord. Can we put our hands together as we receive our Father in the Lord? Amen. Is yours a question or a contribution? Was, let's have the question, leave the contribution. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From our teaching um, today, we talked about the crown of life. Say so God promised and gives crown, um, the crown of life to those who endure trials. So my question is, I was inquisitive about the crowns. So I quickly saw some crowns, um, crown, incorruptible crown, mm -hmm. crown of righteousness, crown mm -hmm. of glory, and mm -hmm. crown of exaltation. So what do we do? Because on the first one, it showed that it will give you the crown of life when you endure, tri when you endure trials. So these other crowns, like crown of righteousness, crown of um, glory, crown of exaltation, what do we do to endure those crowns? To enjoy those crowns. To get them to end, yeah. Yeah, it's in scripture. For instance, the crown of righteousness will be given to those who overcome. He said, uh, I think it's in First Timothy or somewhere, that he will give to me the crown of righteousness, not only to me, but also to those who await his coming or who overcome or something like that. So um, they are meant for certain purposes. Some of them is not here. It's in heaven. Some of those crowns are in heaven, not here. So when we get there, we'll cross that bridge. But the most important thing right now is to live right and live well. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Okay, wow, what an evening. Let's put our hands together for that beautiful presentation by Sister Glory. Now, let me just assure us, if you see a six-year-old stand here to deliver Bible study, behind that six-year-old is Pastor Sonny, Pastor Fola, all the Bible study committee members, there are about seven of us, all of us. So if one person stands here to present, it is all of us that are speaking because that material in your hand went through a lot. It went through a lot of screening and going back and forth and then checking and making sure that it's right before they were delivered. So I want to thank God for that delivery by Sister Glory. To God alone be all the glory. Now, tonight, I'm going to change things a little bit. We are supposed to do the communion now, but I want us to pray. Personal supplication. And I want us to pray from this scripture. What, what we just had tonight is so powerful. And I must let you know, brethren, temptations, the clear distinction which we have heard tonight, temptations are from the devil. Trials are from God to promote us. Temptations are from the devil to make you fall. Now, there's a scripture in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Let's read this together. The Lord, 
know it, how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So there are some people that are called unjust. They refuse to accept the gospel and live according to it. God says, I have reserved them to punishment, but the godly. In other words, the person who is making effort, Lord, I want to love you, I want to walk with you, uh, he knows how to deliver them out of temptations. Now, I must let you know, until God delivers you out of temptation, you might just be, you might just be playing. That's why it's said in uh, Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray, he said, deliver us from what? Temptations. Deliver us from evil. That's temptations. So tonight, brethren, I want you to rise to your feet. This personal supplication is between you and God. Now, this was the story of Lot. If you remember Lot in the city of Sodom, what happened? God went for him. He was Abraham's intercession that made, made God to go after Lot. The Bible says God delivered Lot out of all the temptations that he was facing in Sodom. He brought himself to it, but God, he took God to deliver Saul, uh, Lot out of Sodom for him to be a righteous man and qualify. His wife couldn't make it. Why? She was not. She, they tried to deliver her, but her body, her life, her system just went back. So, brethren, I want you to pray about this. Take a position that is appropriate for you. And I want you to ask the Lord, deliver me out of every temptation that will come my way. Some of the things that face you today are temptations. I'm telling you. The enemy will get you to a corner. He will try you with everything and keep you alone. But listen, you can be delivered out of it. So I want you to go before the Lord now and say, Lord, deliver me out of every temptation that face me daily. Every time I go through a temptation, deliver me. Help my eyes, help the, because there are three categories of temptations. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Lord, deliver me from the lust of the eyes. Deliver me from the lust of the flesh. Deliver me from pride of life that will want to make me take your glory at every time. Now go to the Lord in prayer. Make sure you are praying and ask the Lord. Brethren, you'll be faced with temptations. You better pray now. You better pray now and say, Lord, deliver me out of every temptation that will come my way. You are the one who delivers the godly out of temptation. Deliver me. Deliver me. I yield myself to you. Deliver me from temptations, Lord. Temptations are real. They are real. Don't joke with them. You've had tonight how to recognize them. What are the things in your flesh? What are the weaknesses in your flesh? The weaknesses in the eye. The weaknesses in your soul soul that will want to draw you away from God. Ask the Lord, deliver me completely. Now, stambre hede, jania to zahate laba atara dikata, pando redi atela, ena son tira tahatera, a yelo redi ata, o sombi redeka, a telambi rodo hota gayata, sambre entiano tagala, a renelo zandota ote, te pra uta kateata, a se rehete, jambilo radikata, a natoli paruta. 
Pastor Katale Badate, at work, in the home, on the, in the field, everywhere, when I'm alone, Lord Ebaroda Katateka, Nizato, the things that come my way that want to take me to hell, no, I reject and refuse it, in the name of Jesus, Lord Egalora Badahata, Parikototi Aroda Hatame, Imano Zantila Rata, Epetira Daota, deliver me out of every temptation, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, deliver me from them, deliver me from them, deliver me from them. Nayedo redikata, zobida parakatato hete, e shamina tarabarete, la prekete tiateka, alero de atenema, no zinda hate, a repoto tiate. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. You shall be delivered in Jesus' name. But let me give us a note of warning, brethren. From that outline we read, some of these temptations could be people. Some of them could be certain circumstances. You just find yourself in that circumstance. Some of them, it could be money. It could be anything. You have a part to play. I have a part to play. And what is it? When you know that when you go to certain places, certain temptations come your way, what do you do? You stop going there. There are certain people that are temptations to your life. The moment they show up in your life, they defile you. Why? They fill your ears with things you shouldn't hear. They just load you and load you and load you and load you. Why? It's the devil that uses them. There are many people like that. Now, one day, Jesus stood and Peter came and said to him, you will not go and die. You will not die. What did he say to Peter? Get thee behind me, Satan. You need to be identifying and you need to be sensitive in the spirit to things, to situations, and to people, and to circumstances that are your temptations. I know my limit, for instance. I know my limit. I know the things that tempt me. And so what do I do? I kill them before it arises. I don't even examine it. Like at the Bible study, we were talking about, uh, at the Bible study review, sorry, that situation that she mentioned, you see a purse on the floor. And uh, you open it, money, credit card, all of those inside. And then if you are somebody who likes money so much, the first Temptation that will face you is this is money. God answered my prayer. This is money. So, what should you do? Don't even open the post. If you can see the credit card and all of that information that you need to find the owner, what are you looking in the post for? Is it your own? It's not yours. So what do you do? Immediately, you close it back, go to the nearest place you can find help or people work with, maybe a store or somebody. You, maybe you found it in front of a store. Enter the store and say, well, I found this right in front. The owner may come back to the store. And of course, if the owner came from the store, won't he come back to the store? So there are certain things you need to avoid. You don't need any prayer for that. Just carry yourself and run away. If Joseph was praying and said, Potiphar, I, I reject you in Jesus' name. I reject you in Jesus' name. And the guy, the lady was pulling, pulling, pulling him. Say, come, come, come and have, you know, come and have me, come and have me. What did he do? The shirt and the singlet and everything he could pull. He left them and ran away. That's the approach that we need to have to the things that are called temptations. Run. Some you need to flee. Don't even open it. Don't examine it. Don't look at it. Because when you look at it, that's where your temptation comes from. The lust of the eyes. You shall be delivered. In the name of Jesus. We are face to face with the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ at this time. And I want us to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. Let's read together. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Stop. Let's go back. That night was a trial night for Jesus. It was a promotion night. It was a night of glorification. But at that trial came, what did he do? He took bread. 
He passed on the victory formula to you and I, packaged it in what is called the communion. The same time he was being tried and he was going to, that was the same night he died. That was the same night he was betrayed. That was the same night that he was arrested. That was the same night of his trial. That was the same night they put a crown of thorn on his head and they tore his clothes and sent him to the cross. The same night when his trial was coming. So brethren, this communion is an antidote for you to overcome. It's an antidote for you to go to your next level. So tonight, let, verse 24. And he had, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, it is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And verse 25. And after the same manner, he took the cup when he had stopped. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the power in the lost death till it's come. So there is a power that is contained here that communicates the death of Jesus. What does the death of Jesus, what did he do to us? It brought life to us. If he didn't die, none of us would be saved. There will be no redemption. But his power was packaged here. So this is power as we partake of it tonight, verse 27. Okay, that's 26. So let's distribute it and let's partake of it tonight. As you get yours, cut it open as we prepare to take it. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Take up your cross every day. Don't be ashamed. To say that you know it, count the cost, take up your cross and follow it. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Take up your cross every day. Don't be ashamed to say that you know him from the cross. Take up your cross, oh count the cost. Take up your cross, count the cost. Thank you, Father. Take up your cross, thank you, Jesus. And follow you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Shall we take up the flesh and lift it up above our heads right now? Heavenly Father, this is the flesh of Jesus Christ. As we partake of it, the same victory formula that is contained in Christ is passed on to us right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice shall receive this victory formula and we go from victory to victory. In all trials and temptations of life, we will overcome. And we have overcome in Jesus' name. Shall we eat together? Let's lift up the blood. This is the blood of Jesus Christ by which you and I overcame. It is written, we overcame. We overcame by the blood of the Lamb. So as we drink this blood of Jesus right now, you go from victory to victory. You are an overcomer. In all trials and temptations of life, you will overcome. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name shall we drink. Take the remnant of it, smear it all over you. Anywhere there's pain, just smear it over you. You are covered by that blood in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for tonight. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. How many overcomers are here? Lift up your hands and say, I am an overcomer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Motishi. That's what I did. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm on your first word blessed by that powerful message. Our God is a faithful God. It is that time in the service where we offer our tithes offering, first fruit, our seed, thanksgiving, prophet offering, building project offering unto the Lord. The Bible speaking in Proverbs chapter 3, 9 to 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then it will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Shall we all rise up? If you are worshiping online, go to www.joyoverflow.church or do it and um, give your offering there. Or you can send e-transfer to joyoverflowchurch at gmail.com. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shall we all rise up? As we lift up our offering unto God, begin to bless the name of the Lord, begin to exalt his name. Father, we thank you for this suffering. Lord, we thank you for this, Lord. We give it unto you, we present it to you. Let it be multiplied unto us, O Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Quiet. We bring sacrifice of praise into the suffering. We raise this up to you, Lord. We say, receive this of your children. As we have given unto you, Lord, let our bands be filled with plenty. In the name of Jesus, and let our presses burst forth with wine. In the name of Jesus, let blessings, wealth, promotion, liftings, let it be a, a, a thing that we will enjoy all through this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Let's have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many of us enjoy the Bible story tonight? Don't worry. It's just the introduction. You will see more next week and throughout the rest of the month. And we know that God will open his word to us in Jesus' name. Please, we want to welcome some special people among us. Every one of us is special anyway. But if you are fellowshipping with us for the first time, we want to recognize you. We want to meet with you. We want to know you. Please, do we have anybody like that in the house? Just wave your hands if today is your first time of meeting with us in the evening like this. 
If you are online as well, you can give some arts and or some hand or thump off or so. Uh, hallelujah. Do we have anybody? Amen. This church, Joy Overflow International Church, is soon becoming a place of worship for how many? Hundreds of thousands. So what do we do? We wash out. We take our place and be a part of what is already happening. Finally, let's remain focused on peace, love, and joy. And maintain zero tolerance for strife. Strife is a sin. It will not be mentioned among us in Jesus' name. Let's welcome our Father and the Lord, please. Hallelujah. Now, just uh, three quick announcements that we couldn't take. We had a little bit of technical issues earlier on that didn't make us to give our announcements. So just take these three very important ones. This Friday night is breakthrough night. Friday night is what? Breakthrough night. And the time is 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. It's going to be on Zoom, so let us be ready. If your name, if you don't get any... Uh, messages from the church. Can I see your hands up? You don't get any message from the church? Did I see any hands up? So the Zoom link will be sent using, using that same method. So join us. It's going to be an awesome time in Jesus' name. Next Sunday is our communion Sunday worship service. It's the first Sunday in the month and we partake of the flesh and blood of Jesus and receive strength to go all the way victorious in the new month. Okay, hallelujah. Then, before the end of February, uh, our donation receipts will be sent out individually. Individually, as we have it recorded in our books. So, if you want it as a family, please send a text message to for our pastor at, not text message, a, a message to pastor, an email to pastor at joyoverflow.church. Uh, you have the announcements. If you can help us display, just display so people will know where to send it to. Pastor at joyoverflow.church. If you want your family um, donation receipt to come as a family or individually, send a message to Pastor at Joy Overflow International Church at joyoverflow.church. And then the final one is uh, remember the that we are partnering with Hope Mission. Uh, all the fasting and prayer, the food you didn't eat, don't go back to them. And say, oh, I didn't eat this um, food during 21 days fasting and prayer and I'm just going to start eating them now. Please don't do that. Give it out to the poor. Let's feed the hungry. A number of us have given. Uh, hopefully by the middle of this month, we will cut it off. And then whatever we have received, we'll send out to Hope Mission. So let's be ready to uh, provide uh, lunch for kids who are from homes that don't have uh, the ability to finance their lunches. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? It was a great time at this Bible study tonight. We return all the glory. And like Dickens told us, there are, many, there are three more series. Three more in the series of recognizing temptation. So please don't miss it for any reason. Next week is going to be powerful. Same with the week after and the week after. And they are all in stages. So if you miss one, you might need to do a long research and find out to catch up on the other. So please tell your neighbor, don't miss any of the series. Aha, uh -huh. what did they say? What did she say? I will miss it. Okay, what did they say? I will not miss it. Okay, please don't miss any of the series. Let's be here. It's going to bless us and uh, God's name will be glorified in Jesus' name. The remaining days of this week are week days of favor for you. Now, I, I couldn't respond to that uh, brother's uh, question on a um, job you didn't apply for. If you get a job uh, you didn't apply for, it's a miracle job. Favor is real. Say favor is real. Favor is real. You are not the one who went to the company to go and get them letter of employment and then send for your references and did all of that. If it came, take it. It's God working in your favor. And it has nothing to do with whether integrity or not. It's favor. 
Did jo jo Joseph apply for the job of prime minister? Huh? When they said, go to the prison. They said, the guy is wearing orange clothes. He said, no, no, I don't care. He has a solution. Go and bring him. The guy was a prisoner. He slept in the prison in the night. By the morning, they said, Joseph, the king of Egypt is looking for you. He said, why? He said, there is a problem. And you are the only one who can solve it. God will do for you this year. He will create problems with you, the only one having the solution. And that is favor. Shout favor. That's your portion in Jesus' name. As you go tonight, the blessing of God rests on you. The glory of the Lord rests on you. Every temptation that comes your way, you will overcome. Every trial you go through, you will be promoted. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Shall we together share the covenant? Let's go. God will show me for the part of life, for in his presence is the fullness of my joy. And at his right hand are my pleasures forevermore. Peace, love, and joy. Turn to your neighbor and assure them, my glory is here. No loss, no pain, no shame. Turn to somebody else and assure them, my glory is here. No loss, no pain, no shame. No loss, no pain, no shame for you. In Jesus' name. Shall we take our covenant song? Jehovah,